Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing well, and welcome to a film that I've been waiting to make for two years. The Sunbelt Ag Expo was canceled in 2020 for reasons which I won't say, but you can probably guess. This video is going to be an overview of some of the equipment there, but I'm calling it Equipment Highlights. I went with a school group this year, so I only had about three or four hours to film instead of the whole day like I would normally. And if I featured every last piece of equipment, this video would be about seven years long. So for the sake of your time and mine, we'll be looking at just the equipment highlights. So I apologize in advance if there's something particular that you wanted to see that I missed. All this being said though, thank you very much for watching and enjoy. Following tradition, our first stop of the day is at Branson Tractors. Since 1998, the company has built top-of-the-line garden and compact tractors. Their lineup consists of machines ranging from 21 horsepower up to 58 horsepower, and almost all models can be equipped with a bucket loader on the front. In addition, some models can be equipped with a rear-mounted backhoe digger. Many of the tractors do not have enclosed cabs, meaning unfortunately for me the seats are wet early in the morning, and I learned that the hard way. Some noteworthy appearances include the 2205 Hydrostat, the 4208C, the 2610 Hydrostat, and the 5520R, the latter being one of Branson's largest tractors. The 2205 Hydrostat is an all-in-one machine, featuring turf tires, open station, front-mounted bucket loader, cutting deck, and the rear-mounted backhoe with stabilizers. Each of Branson's models is powered by either a three- or four-cylinder engine that meets Tier 4 emission standards. It appears red is a popular color among compact tractor brands because our next stop is Mahindra. Mahindra featured an impressive lineup of tractors, ranging from 19 horsepower all the way to 120 horsepower. Like Branson, many of Mahindra's tractors can be equipped with front bucket loaders or rear-mounted backhoe diggers. Their smallest model, the Emax S, also features a cutting deck. Some other models featured at this year's expo include the 4550, the 5145, the 1626BH, and the 1635. Tractors are not the only thing Mahindra has to offer though. The company also has an array of ATVs, as well as various tractor implements, including snow kits. Next up we have some orange mixing in. Coyote is a South Korean company that launched its American tractor line in 1986 and ever since has been striving to make a name for itself in the world of small and mid-sized tractors. Their tractor lineup ranges in power from a 3-cylinder 20 horsepower engine to a 4-cylinder 110 horsepower engine. Each machine has the option for bucket loaders and some smaller models have options for backhoe diggers or cutting decks. Some of the models featured here include the RX7320, PX1153, NX5510, and CX2510, just to name a few. Not wanting to be a company known for missing opportunities, Coyote prides itself in having a robust line of ATVs, UTVs, and zero-turn lawnmowers, as well as a high-end variety of implements. One noteworthy model featured at this year's expo includes the Mecron 2240, one of Coyote's all-terrain vehicles, which can wear either traditional orange or a special dark green livery. But Coyote wasn't finished there. They also decided to showcase two prototype models, which will hopefully be coming soon. The first is a stand-up zero-turn mower. That's right, no seat. The other is the company's entry into the world of skid loaders, a bold step at expanding the rapidly growing company. Whether involved with agriculture or not, almost everyone knows this green and yellow. The plow company first entered the tractor business in 1918, with the Model N, better known as the Waterloo Boy. 
From then on, John Deere has expanded massively into different types of equipment. In recent years, Deere was the only company to showcase a combine, forager, or cotton picker at the expo, though none of those made an appearance this year. They would also pride themselves in having the largest array of equipment at the show. This also changed as a much smaller array was displayed, and because their assigned lot was the same size as usual, each machine had to be spread out to try and cover the space. This isn't directly Deere's fault though, as the expo sources equipment from the nearest dealerships. This very well could be all they had available. Considering what the world just went through in the past two years, it's understandable. All this being said, the equipment they did have was a very nice selection including a 400 series sprayer, a few next generation 8R series tractors, some balers, tillage equipment, and planters. As usual, JCB had a very small exhibit this year, but I couldn't miss showing you this 4000 series fast track. JCB prides itself in having the fastest road legal tractor in the world. And I even met a nice man from the UK who talked with me more in depth about the tractor. He politely declined my offer for an interview. Deutsch Farr first entered the tractor business in 1894 with a 26 horsepower traction engine. The German company is a well-renowned brand in Europe, but it was only in 2018 that they first made an appearance at the Sunbelt Ag Expo. Since then, Deutsch Farr has been attempting to set a permanent foothold in the American South, though the effectiveness of this gamble is questionable. Even so, this hasn't stopped them from trying, which of course is commendable. German engineering has already proven itself in the automotive industry, so where they can go in agriculture is anyone's guess. Some noteworthy models from this year's show include the 5080.4 DF, the 6215 Agritron, and the 7250 Agritron TTV, one of the company's larger tractors. Deutsch Farr's tractor lineup ranges from 40 horsepower all the way up to 440 horsepower in a selection of three, four, and six cylinder engines. The company also produces a line of combines, but these have yet to make an appearance at the expo. Unfortunately, due to time, I couldn't stay very long at Kubota, but very quickly, I did want to show you the largest model they featured at the Expo this year, the M8201, which can muscle right at 200 horsepower. Many years ago, New Holland was one of the largest equipment brands that made an appearance at the Expo, bringing a massive array of tractors, hay and silage equipment, construction equipment, self-propelled wind rowers, a CR series combine, and an FR series forager. New Holland has radically scaled back their booth as of late, but that doesn't mean they can't bring a good lineup. This year they opted to focus on their T5, T6, and T7 series tractors, their roll belt family of balers, as well as other hay and silage equipment and construction equipment. Some noteworthy models include the T6155, the T7215, the Workmaster 120, and the Roll Belt 450 and 460, with the 450 being the smaller of the two. New Holland has made their tractor labeling quite convenient, with the number before the period being the series and the number following the engine's horsepower rating. So for example, a T6.155 is a T6 series tractor with approximately 155 horsepower. All in all, a very good display from New Holland this year. After years of waiting, Case has finally brought a combine to the Expo once again, but just before that, let's take a quick peek at this. For reasons I cannot be bothered to make up, this Chrome Big X Forager was not actually at the Chrome booth, but rather at the Case booth. Krona is a globally known producer of hay and silage equipment, and the Big X Forager has made a name for itself in the world of silage. This particular 630 model cranks out 653 horsepower, but this pales in comparison to larger models. This is because Krona also holds the current record for the strongest forager in operation, the Big X 1180, which punches out a whopping 1,150 horsepower. 
Now on to my favorite brand of the whole show, Case IH. Along with New Holland, the case display has been massively downsized in past years. That being said, they came out strong this year, bringing the only combine you will find at the 2021 Sunbelt Ag Expo. In 1977, after several years of testing, International Harvester introduced a new and completely different style of combine, unlike anything in use at the time. The new rotary design used a single large cylinder, or rotor, which ran long ways front to back in the machine. Other companies began to follow suit. New Holland developed a twin rotor design. Kloss adapted it into a conventional rotary hybrid for the Lexion. And other brands like Deere waited until the patents ran out to implement their own single rotor design. The revolutionary system laid the foundation that all modern rotary combines are based off. This year, Case IH brought one of their new 8250 machines. This class 8 combine has a 410 bushel grain bin and is powered by a 480 horsepower engine. The auger, with its adjustable end spout, can unload the entire bin at a rate of 4.5 bushels per second. Apart from the combine, Case also featured a 580 horsepower Steiger quad track, as well as some of the new generation Magnum tractors some smaller series tractors like the Maxim and Puma, and tillage and construction equipment. All in all, a very exciting presentation from Case IH this year. Now we're headed over to the Agco family. Agco is actually a parent company which contains Massey Ferguson, Challenger, and Fent. Unfortunately, Challenger did not make an appearance at this year's show, so we'll start with looking at Massey Ferguson. Massey aims its efforts at producing top-of-the-line tractors, hay equipment, planters, and various material handlers and implements. Some noteworthy tractors featured here include the 8700S, the 7700S, and the 5700. Also making an appearance at the show is the 8S265. The new 8S and 5S make up the company's brand new tractor line. Key updates to this series include a new drivetrain, 10% reduction in fuel consumption, redistribution of weight, updated systems, restyled bodywork, and a refurbished and modernized cab. Apart from tractors, Massey also showcased several balers and different hay pieces. One specific baler to be mentioned is the 1745D round baler, one of the Heston family baler kits featured at the show which are manufactured by Massey Ferguson. At the other side of the Agco booth, we have Fent. Fent made their first appearance at the Sunbelt Ag Expo in 2019. Fent is a German company based in Marktoberdorf, Germany, and I do apologize if I said that wrong, and has gone down in history for creating the world's first continuously variable transmission for use in tractors. Named the Vario, the transmission was unveiled on the 926 tractor at Agritechnica in 1995 and implemented to all Fent tractors from 1995 on. Similar to what International Harvester did with rotary combines, Fent laid the groundwork for other brands worldwide to begin creating their own CVTs. In 2019, Fent began adapting the new body styling from their 1100 series tractors onto the 900 series, as well as a few others. The Fent display at this year's expo includes the Vario 722, 516, and 936 tractors, as well as the Rogator 937H sprayer. The Rogator's height alone is worth attention. For a reference, I am a six foot tall human and I can walk without obstruction underneath it. The 937H's fertilizer bin is also on the large side, holding up to 1300 gallons of liquid fertilizer. All in all, a great lineup from the Agco family this year. In years past, Kloss opted to fly mostly under the radar at the Expo. They would only bring one Lexion, or maybe one Jaguar, and the equipment was always locked up tight. In 2019, however, Kloss relocated in the show and began opening up their equipment. 
their array has also grown, being even larger in 2021. Upon arriving, a 920 Axion tractor greeted me. The Axion family contains two lines, the 800 series and the 900 series. The 920 model is the smallest in the 900 series, but make no mistake there's nothing small about it, as it can muscle up to 316 horsepower. Beyond the Axion, Kloss showcased an array of their prized silage equipment, including tetters, Roland and Variant balers, and not one, but two twin Jaguar foragers. The 980 and 840 Jaguars were presented side by side with 884 horsepower and 406 horsepower respectively. One of the foragers featured Kloss's well-renowned Orbis header, which uses a series of rotating knife wheels to pull crop into the machine. The other forager featured a pickup header designed to collect crops such as alfalfa that have already been windrowed. All in all, I would say, as far as equipment goes, it was a very good year for the Sunbelt Ag Expo. If there was something you wanted to see that I missed, I do of course apologize. Like I said, I was on a bit of a tight schedule, so I only had a certain amount of time I could spend with each brand. And I do regret that I couldn't film more at Kubota, but it is what it is. That being said, I do hope you enjoyed this as much as I did making it. I hope all of you have a fantastic day, and I will see you next time. Take care.